Hello everyone, so welcome to my teaching video of how to get started playing Go. I'm a fairly new player, but these are the four steps uh, that you would need to just start playing the game of Go. Now there will be extra advanced steps later on in future videos, but this is just the bare minimum just to get comfortable with the game and get started. So step number one is understand the boards and stones. There are three types of boards that are generally being played. This is a nine by nine board right here. Uh, you have the 13 by 13, which is slightly bigger. And then you have the 19 by 19, which is the standard size boards that people will play in tournaments. And so uh, depending on your skill level, I highly recommend starting off with the nine by nine board. Just get to understand the game of Go. Uh, once you are comfortable with nine by nine, go to 13 by 13, and then eventually go to a 19 by 19 as the games gets more complex with bigger boards. Now the stones. How do we play the game of Go? We place stones on the intersection line. So notice uh, when we're talking about 9x9, 9 13x13, 9, 13 and 90x19, 90 19, all we're doing is we're really counting how many intersection points there are on the side of the board. So if you can see right here, we have the coordinates uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in terms of intersection points. And uh, for the rows right here, and then for the columns is A through J. Uh, chances are you will see some boards with 1 through 9 and 1 through 9. Uh, but for OGS, we label them as 1 through 9, A through J. And so each player will take turns placing stones on a specific intersection point. So right here, uh, black plays the stone on C7, and then white plays the stone on G7. And you guys will take turns uh, placing stones on intersection points. Now, once they are placed, you can never move them again. It's not like chess, it's not like checkers, where you're able to move the pawns, the knights, uh, the checker pieces around the board. Once the stones have been placed, that's it, they're done. And so the main idea is to try to place stones in a way uh, where you're able to surround and capture, which will eventually go into step number two. So, hello everyone. So. Uh, really quickly before we go into step number two, I should just mention that the objective of the game is to end the game with the most captured stones and the most territory, which we'll talk about in the next couple steps. So step number two, capture stones. Here we go. So step number two is the ideas of lifelines and capturing. And so uh, here we have uh, a stone. If I place a stone right here, what are lifelines? Lifelines are essentially uh, what it's called is the lifeline of the stone. And if you look at the stone, however many intersection points that are open around the stone is their lifeline. So if we look at this black stone right now, there is one, two, three, four intersection points. That means they have uh, four lifelines. And the goal of the game or one of the goals of the game is to surround your opponent's stone fully. So if you're able to surround your opponent's stone fully, say that you have one, two, three, and four, what's going to happen is that this stone, because now all the lifelines are cut off, is going to get captured. Okay. And so the stone will get captured. Uh, it will disappear on an online forum. I'm doing a review game, so it doesn't seem like that right now. Let's see if I can actually get it to work. Let's see right here. One, two, and I'm going to play elsewhere. Three, four. Five. There you go. So now the stones have been captured. Okay. So that's essentially uh, what you would need to know in terms of capturing your opponent's stone. Now, can lifelines be extended? Yes, they can. So if somehow I play like this, actually, you know what? Let's do this. If I play something like this, right here, once you have two or more of your stones connected, touching each other adjacent uh, in terms of the intersection points, you extend the lifeline of the overall group. So instead of having four that uh, four lifelines as we had before, now we have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because now they share their lifelines. And so to capture uh, the group of two stones right here, what I would need to do is I would need to cover, as the opponent, I would need to cover six of those lifelines and then the unit can be captured. Okay, so that's step number two. So step number one, understand the different boards, how to place stones. Step number two is understand what lifelines are and how to capture them, okay? And the more stones that you have in a row, okay, 
the more stones that you have in a row, uh, the more lifelines you will eventually have uh, in the long run, and it will be a lot harder for your opponent to capture. Okay. So step number three. I highly recommend, and this is going to be very controversial, I highly recommend just joining an online community right now. Uh, there is one more step after this, which is counting territories, and this is how we would actually play a game and, and see who, who wins or not. But because with an online form such as OGS right here, if you look in the top top corner right here, OGS is one of the online forums that I, uh, I am playing right now on, and that's how I started. Uh, the reason why I say this is because there, the computer or the AI of the uh, site itself will calculate your territories at the very end. So as a total beginner, just start playing. Just start playing around and start placing stones around and see uh, what are the different strategies there are uh, to win. Okay. So as long as you're just continuously playing or whatnot, you're eventually going to come up with an estimated score. Say that this was your game right here. It's a very uh, <laughs> sloppy game. But it is a game nonetheless, right? So say that this was somehow your game. That's fine. Uh, eventually, what's going to happen is that you are going to have the computer estimate your score. And the, the computer can count how many scores or what is your overall territory if you're a, if you're a black or versus if you're the white stones. Okay, black stones versus white stones. And in this game right here, just by playing, the computer has calculated that the black won by 8 ish points eight and a half points eight ish points okay uh depending on uh the the value or the largeness of the squares don't worry about that that's just the computer's way of saying ah you could have potentially got this point uh just count the big squares uh for the computer the computer will do all the work for you but that's essentially why i would say go to an online forum one you get to meet more players that are interested in playing the game uh two you're able to converse with players and three if you don't want, uh, if there are no players around, uh, you can play with an AI uh, at the skill rating or at the level that you want to play at. Okay, and we'll talk about ranking in a totally different video. Uh, this is just for absolute beginners. So there you have it. Okay, so step three: join an online community. We have OGS, we have KGS. You can go on Google, type "online go," uh, play "online go," and it will pop up some websites for you. Okay, now. Step number four is territorial counting. So once you're comfortable with playing, with placing stones, understanding that as you connect stones, you expand your liberties, and then you kind of get the idea of playing the game itself, that's when I would recommend, all right, now let's start recognizing territory. All right, so I had to take a break and then come back, but here is a nine by nine example of counting territory. So at the end of the game, you probably will have a map something like this. So let's count the territories right now. Say that you were uh, the black stones. So in order to count your territory right here, let's see if I can get my pen out. Right there we go. Okay, oops. Okay, say that you were the black stones. How you count your territory is by finding the area at which your territory borders or creates a border towards the edge of the map or you have an enclosed area. So what do I mean by that? I'm What I mean is, uh, if you look at this top right hand corner right here, you can see that the area in this top right hand corner is enclosed fully by the black stones. So this would be our territory. Now, like I said, if you have a territory that is surrounded by your stones fully, uh, such as this little corner right here, this is essentially also your territory as well. And how you would see that it's surrounded by all of your stones is by looking at the liberty of the empty space. If you look, uh, the liberty of the empty space or the stones that are connected to this empty liberty, you'll see that it's this stone right here, one, two, three, four. So it's completely surrounded uh, by your uh, your stones. Okay, and let me change the color to red. So now let's start counting. All right, so in this top right-hand corner, let's count how many territories we have. Well, right here we have one, we have two, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so in this territory right here black has nine points and i know i'm writing very messy but that's okay so nine points all right right here i have another one point and then right here i have one two three four five six seven so seven and one so total black has nine plus seven plus one is 17 points okay now what about white white has let's see white doesn't really have this top uh, 
left hand corner the reason why is because black is also sharing the border with white so this is what we would regard as a neutral space any player can really take it and we'll get more into that later just have the ai play on ogs first step three go on ogs play and then get more comfortable with the game then we can go to more specifics uh, this would also be uh, known as the neutral zone because both black and white zones are touching it. But white's territory is essentially these two spaces right here. And if we count, this is also a 3x3. Three three, so this will be 9 points right here. And this it will be 3 points because of 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Uh, this, this spacing right here is also a neutral. So we're going to write N for neutral. Neutral. Okay, and neutral. So right now, white's complete territory is roughly around 12 points. Black's complete territory is roughly around 17 points. So in this game, in this example game, black would have won uh, by quite a margin, by about five-ish points. Okay? And then we did the estimated score. You can see uh, what the computer would estimate on uh, by looking at the squares itself. Okay? So again, this is just a bare minimum. Don't worry about the extra six and a half points. Don't worry about the Comey. Don't worry about the infinite code. Don't worry about any of that. Just get started. So those are the four steps just to get started playing Go. Once you get more comfortable with it, then watch other uh, videos on the more advanced rules. But I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a simplistic, broken down, super, super basic uh, way to play go this is how i actually started learning to play go and so i'm sharing that with you guys so if you guys like this video please comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next go video